Public health surveillance is the collection of information for action. And the collection of public health surveillance data can be in many forms. It can be passive, that is routine reporting by health facilities, or it can be active. For example, in polio eradication, children with flaccid paralysis are actively sought to make sure that all the polio is found. At the same time, surveillance can be from all reporting centers or from just a few reporting centers, and this is called sentinel surveillance. Each one of these types of surveillance have different functions, but in general, surveillance is for action. And that action is for three different purposes. First, it's to establish the disease burden, what's going on in the country and what diseases are present and how they rank among each other. Second is surveillance for monitoring and evaluation for determining how effective disease control programs are in having an impact on the diseases to which they're targeted. And the third is to establish thresholds to determine when there is an event that's above the threshold that requires special attention. Putting all surveillance together, it can fall broadly under two categories. Integrated disease surveillance and response which is reporting of a targeted few numbers of diseases in a country, those diseases which are priority. And this is reporting from private, from public, or from both sectors into a common source. Many times, however, surveillance is not integrated. There are parallel systems, one, for example, for malaria, one for polio, one for diarrheal disease. But what's important is that at some point after they're reported, they're analyzed, compared together, and then there's a report made of that and provided to the centers that are doing the surveillance and to others so that there can be the appropriate action. The other way that surveillance is packaged is event-based surveillance. Event-based surveillance is surveillance that's looking for special events, and this often takes advantage of the internet and search capacity of various systems on the internet so that you identify specific, using specific keywords disease events or outbreaks that are important. Oftentimes event-based surveillance is more sensitive and finds disease more rapidly than does integrated disease surveillance, but in the end they're all working towards the same thing, collecting data for action. Many times surveillance is done for international purposes as well. And a good example of this is surveillance done for the international health regulations. The international health regulations are an agreement, actually almost a treaty, among all the member countries of the World Health Organization. And this system is developed in order that there can be um, a rapid response to disease when and where it occurs and also so that there isn't a disruption in travel and transport when those outbreaks do occur. It's aimed at both countries which are required to strengthen their core capacities in public health, including public health surveillance. And there's a global safety net which is reporting infectious diseases to the World Health Organization, either event-based surveillance or surveillance in the integrated disease surveillance framework that comes into WHO. If there is an event that's occurring in a country and it qualifies as a public health emergency of international concern, then the international health regulations do much more than just observe and collect data. They actually begin a global response. So the international health regulations are, two, are aimed at two things. One is strengthening national capacity to detect and respond to diseases where and when they occur. And if this isn't effective and diseases begin to spread internationally, then there's a global response through a safety net that's created by the international health regulations. There are several things that are important about public health surveillance. One is sharing that data appropriately. In some instances, it only needs to be shared within a country. In others, it should be shared regionally, and in others, such as in eradication programs, it should be shared globally. But there are many times obstacles to sharing. These can include such things as ethics, 
politics, or a combination of many different things, including legal constraints. So it's often important to overcome these obstacles in order to share the data in the appropriate way so that the response and the appropriate response from public health surveillance can occur. Many times this is called global surveillance if data is shared regionally and globally. And that global surveillance, as I said earlier, is especially important for disease elimination and eradication programs. At the same time, donor agencies or development agencies have a very important role in making sure that when they do support surveillance, if it's a vertical system of surveillance, reporting from the periphery up to the central level, that at the central level it's used in a horizontal manner so that analysis and comparison can be made. So donor agencies have a responsibility in making sure that what they support in public health surveillance is used for the, t the entire country and is assimilated and analyzed in the appropriate manner. Many times public health surveillance is couched in terms of global health security. And this is a very important way of approaching surveillance because this means that everyone can play a role. Governments must engage in, in determining what events might be a threat to their own national health security, both to the security of individuals and to the collective security of their country. And at the same time, internationally, it's important that these systems in the, that the systems in countries be strengthened. And that's where such initiatives as the Global Health Security Agenda are very important. And DFID is one of the members of that Global Health Security Agenda, which is aiming to strengthen the capacity in countries under the regulations, the international health regulations, to make sure that public health surveillance and response activities are in place and can be functioning. That includes not only reporting systems, but also laboratory systems to confirm diagnosis as diseases are reported. So there are many ways that DFID can provide support for public health surveillance. What's important that when it is that when it does this, it, do this, it does this in such a way that it's working along with other development partners from other countries, and of course, following the priorities of the countries in which they're working.